Hey everyone, this is Ben with the Tiger's Den, coming back with some Magic the Gathering Arena. Before we get started, I'm just going to check YouTube and make sure that uh, we're connected. Uh, OBS has been giving me some issues actually going live. All right, good. Confirming that we are live, cooking with cats in MTG Arena. Sweet. Um, so, welcome back. It's been a while. Feels like it's been a while since we've done any Magic the Gathering streaming here. Um, if, uh, I mean, we, we, did, we did the stream yesterday about the the um, Pioneer format and the ban restricted announcement and things like that. But in terms of actually doing, um, oh, and if you want to, if you want to check those out, um, head back. They were all, it was yesterday. Um, just check our stream history with the previous thing in the Magic the Gathering channel or, um, the thing before the last thing in our streaming history, I think. Chris is doing some Legends of Rune Terra, checking that out today. Um, but yeah, so here we are. We are back. We're gonna do some arena and I have to apologize. Last week, I did a stream where we tried out three different uh, Oven Familiar slash Witches Oven, or <laughs> Oven Familiar, Cauldron Familiar Witches Oven decks, and it was great, and um, some of them were great, some of them weren't great, and um, we had a great time, and then I checked afterwards, and the stream didn't make it to YouTube. Um, it just seemed to die at, like, it ended at OBS and never went beyond that point. So, um, just because I'm paranoid, I'm going to give it one more check here and make sure that it looks like we are actually indeed casting. And then I'll make sure that my phone is on Do Not Disturb. All right. Still live. Good to go. It's good enough for me. Um, so, anyway, I hope you've all been well. Missed y'all. Um, but here we are again, and we're going to basically run back what we did last time. I don't know how it's going to go, because as you probably know, um, there is a ban list announcement yesterday. Two days from now, the field's going to completely change when Field of the Dead is banned. And so I think it's just kind of a complete free-for-all right now. <laughs> like, no one... I have, I have no idea what the meta is. As you can see, I haven't played in a few days. I have my, uh, my dailies stacked up. So because um, I'm getting started late because of the stream problems, I'm just going to do two decks, even though we had three here. Um, I'll take a quick look at this one. This deck seems kind of like a, a little bit more of a meme deck to me. It's basically, I just tried shoving the food package and the Cauldron Familiar package into the same deck, and it didn't really work very well. There were some adjustments that we could make, like Rankle probably isn't very good here at all. Like, that should be cut out. Um, maybe maybe uh, go up to another Midnight Reaper. Uh, the Once Upon a Time was quite good. Uh, maybe a little bit more of a blue splash. I don't know. Um, we could definitely reconfigure the mana too. But this one, this one just sort of felt kind of middling, and it wasn't really, like, if I'm going to play... A combo deck with the Witch's Oven Cauldron Familiar combo. I want to play that combo. So what does that combo do? You're probably asking. Well, it's not an infinite combo. Um, it doesn't just like you play it out and your opponent's dead like with Splinter Twin or Copycat or anything like that. Um, but what we're doing is we're playing this Cauldron Familiar, which is a 1-1 one -one that drains our opponent for one when it comes into play, and we can sacrifice a food to put it from our graveyard back into play. Witch's Oven, we can tap and sacrifice a creature to get a food token. So what we're doing is we're trying to get a Witch's Oven and a Cauldron Familiar into play, and then we are trying to just sack our Familiar over and over and over, um, getting Life Drain on our opponent. That gives us like free chump blockers, because we can block with Cauldron Familiar and then sacrifice it and then get it back. So we effectively keep our Cauldron Familiar into play, but our opponent's creature is blocked as long as it doesn't have Trample. Um, so like you could put this in front of a Rotting Regisar every turn and just completely blank its combat damage. And then of course we have Mayhem Devil in this version. Uh, so this is this is basically the Aristocrats list, but with uh, if you if you watch my Aristocrats videos from last season before Eldraine dropped, this is the updated version of that list where we got some cool new goodies like Claim the Firstborn, which is amazing in this deck, and I'll get to that later. We got Wrinkle, who works really well with Aristocrats, um, and then the Cauldron Familiar, which is Oven Combo, and Once Upon a Time, which you're probably looking at this deck and going, wait, this is a two-color deck with Once Upon a Time. What's going on there? There's a funny thing. Once Upon a Time actually makes your deck more consistent a lot of the time, even if it doesn't have green in it to begin with. So let's take a look at our mana base. We have seven green lands total. One forest, three overgrown tomb, three swamp. This list would probably have 22 lands. That would be a little bit greedy, but we could probably do 22 lands um, without Once Upon a Time. But because of Once Upon a Time, we added one basic forest that we can get with our Fabled Passage, which we'd be running anyways to fix our colors, because we're very greedy on colors here. We have black-red, we have double-red, we have red-black here, we have double-black. So, um, so these so these Fabled Passages would be here anyways. 
And then we have these shock lands. But if we didn't have these shock lands, this would be three swamp, three mountain. So this doesn't actually make our mana any less consistent. It just makes it a little bit more painful. And because we're an aggressive deck that is able to repeatedly gain life off of Cauldron Familiar, I don't think, and also by just, you know, sacking things and eating the food, I don't think it's that much of a problem that we're going to have to shock in. And um, the last time I did this, like full disclosure, I did feel like I got color screwed a lot. But I would be getting color screwed less, or I'd be getting color screwed more often if I weren't running this with the green splash, because Once Upon a Time is there in part to help us find the right colors. So we've added a color, but really what that has done is increase our consistency at the cost of a couple of life every game, usually. Uh, Once Upon a Time is also really important for these decks, because this is a highly synergistic deck, and all the synergies except for Oven and Chandra, and I guess our sack effects, or the, the steel effects, but... You know, of, of our engine, 19 of the cards are creatures. And so having Once Upon a Time, which can either find us the right land, often for free, or find us whatever piece of this engine we need to assemble, has been really good in my experience. So what we're trying to do with this deck is um, get our combo into play, and then start draining our opponent, dealing damage for them with Mayhem Devil, um, getting in with Rankle, and breaking its symmetry by... Um, by getting extra value out of our sacrifices, uh, or by sacrificing Chandra tokens, or by stealing their stuff and then sacrificing their stuff. Because we can... So, um, I don't know if Active Treason is right here, but I've been getting good use out of it, so I have two in the main deck now. This could... Maybe this is supposed to be like Bone Crusher Giant, or maybe a Murderous Rider or something. But for right now, I've been using this. And part of the reason for that is that we have... Um, well, actually, let's start with Claim the Firstborn, because this is a much better card in this deck, and that's what it's for. So Claim the Firstborn, this is a threaten effect for one mana. It only hits three and lower CMC creatures, but in a deck where you have all this sacrifice, that's awesome, because this usually lets us get in for extra damage, because we can like steal their blocker and then attack with whatever we have, and then we're dealing damage to them with their own blocker, and then we have all these sacrifice effects. So we can throw it in the oven... Um, we can sacrifice it to Rankle, we can sacrifice it to Priest of Forgotten Gods, and actually sacrificing it to Rankle is amazing, because we can like steal one of their creatures, and then attack them with Rankle, and then sacrifice their creature to make them sacrifice one of their creatures. So effectively, this just double edicts them, or blows up a creature and then sacrifices one of theirs. Also, the hidden mode of this is giving your own creatures haste, or untapping them. So every once in a while, it comes up where you have a Priest of Forgotten Gods, that, like, you you played Chandra turn 3, turn 4 you top deck Priest. Well, now you can play Priest and haste Priest and make Chandra elementals and then sacrifice them. Or, if you already had your Priest in play, you can activate Priest, untap Priest, activate it again. So it's a very powerful card in this deck, because between that and all the ways we can sacrifice their creatures after stealing them, um, while even, like, you know, if we steal big creatures, we can turn them into two food, and that's even better than one food. So lots of cool synergies in this deck. Here's what we have on the sideboard. I do like the Veil of Summer here because this is a very tempo-reliant deck, and it's very reliant on keeping its particular pieces in play. And Veil of Summer is a huge tempo blowout that also protects our engine. So I feel like even though we only have uh, seven plus four fetches for green, it's probably worth running a few here. Not just Grasp because, you know, the meta... Lava Coil, largely the same thing. Murderous Riders here in the side, and then two more Active Treason for if we decide we want them. I'm just going to do best of one for now, because you don't have a whole lot of time, and usually when I have just thrown a deck together, I prefer doing... Oops, that's the wrong deck. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Thank you. Usually when I'm doing a new deck, I like to run it through best of one for a little while, just because that gives me a better sense of, you know... Uh, of where the main deck is and what works and what doesn't work there, because I can just, you know, hammer out so many game ones in the time that I could do a couple of uh, best of threes. All right. So this is a little awkward in that we can't get... We don't have turn one untapped black unless we top deck it. But this is a pretty good hand otherwise, so I'm going to keep this. Stormfist Crusader does kind of... There we go. Uh, so I'm actually going to lead with this and grab a Swamp. Stormfist Crusader does help us draw into the right cards. I should probably talk about Stormfist Crusader a bit, too. Um, well, that's, that doesn't bode well for us. But lots of life game doesn't bode well for Cavalcade, so we'll see how it goes. So Stormfist Crusader is a very divisive card, and it's probably going to be very bad for us in this match, um, because... 
Um, hmm. I think I like shocking him for priest here. Um, because we are... So th this is me hoping to top deck a red source and then play a Chandra and then establish dominance. Um, it's not like that's going to happen. So the reason that I like Strong Fist Crusader here is that our deck is more aggressive than average, so the life loss element hurts our opponent more than it hurts us. The... Ooh, turning off our life gain is a huge problem. No red there. Um, we can steal their thing and then attack Tybalt down. I don't think that's the best play, though. I think I like... Um... I think I just like playing Mayhem Devil here. So he's turning off our life gain, so that's going to be a huge problem for us. Um, we don't want Priest of Forgotten Gods to hit this because it'll die and deal a damage to her and then she'll die. Which is not good. Do they just go, like, land Torbrand here? We're in such a world of hurt. Ooh, good. They put him to one. That could actually work out well for us. Especially if we find... I'm just going to run this out because we need to take these things off the table. If they have a shot for our Mayhem Devil, that's bad for us, but um, because we don't have a second source of red, we can't really guarantee getting Chandra down, which is what we need to... Like, if we could get Chandra down for sure next turn, I would I would just play it safe with Mayhem Devil and then start blowing up all their stuff. Oh, that's super bad for us. Oh my god. Yep. Uh, that's not the land we needed. So this is why... Um, so anyway, uh, to get back to the Stormfist Crusader deal... Um, I think we do this. Nope, we can't play that plus this. We have to go like this. Um, so, in addition to being more... being faster paced than our opponent's decks and being able to um, get more out of the symmetrical life loss... We also... Oh, yep, there's that release ready product. Someone else. Well, that was a pretty good turn. Um, ooh, and that was very nice. In addition to that, um, there's also the fact that because our mana curve is lower than most decks, we can throw out the cards that we get from Stormfist Crusader faster than our opponents can. On top of that, because our deck is highly synergistic, drawing additional cards in combination with each other is often more powerful than the combinations of cards our opponents can put together. So there's a lot of ways that we break the symmetry of Stormfist Crusader. Especially just because, like, you know, if you can draw into, like, three... Because you saw, like, how Chandra plus Mayhem Devil, if you would have been able to stick Mayhem Devil there, just how incredibly powerful that is. Well, that's an aggressive play. Since we don't have an oven here, I am... definitely willing to trade that. Um... Because if they have, like, a land and then a way of killing Priest, that's super punishing for us. They do not... Ooh, okay, so here... So we go to 13, but then we can really start putting the hurt on. I've heard that there's a bug with Priest of Forgotten Gods where if you target yourself for this, it doesn't let you sacrifice a creature, which you actually do want to do a lot of the time. So that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, but hopefully that'll get fixed in the near future. So opponent has two cavalcades, and they could have lots of hasty threats like that. <laughs> so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8 damage. We go to 5. Oh, or they could just kill our Chandra that we have another one of in our hand. Okay, deal. Right 
Well, I don't think we're blocking either of these guys. Oop. So, what's your opinion on Chandra, opponent? The really cool thing with Chandra in this deck is that she has lots of really good flashback targets, and a lot of them are really cheap. I'm gonna leave, priest uh, leave a priest back to block when I use the other one to sack. Because um, we've got, um, we've got claim the firstborn for one, which is big game. Now I could actually activate Castle Lockwood off this, but I don't want to go to eight. That seems terrible. Um, but then we also have Once Upon a Time, which is a great target for Chandra to flashback. Because it gives us mana fixing and card advantage and all that stuff. Our opponent's kind of flooding out here. Looks like they might have a way of finishing off Chandra here. Yep. Fine with... Oh, no. Okay, well, now we have a Witch's Oven, so now we can... Okay. <clears throat> so now we can start looping. I think we're actually going to do this first. We will... Because I would rather drain them and then play Stormfist Crusader and sack it, because I don't want to have Stormfist Crusader out. It's kind of a liability. So I think my preferred way of doing this is this. Activate. Sack these guys. See what we draw. Spend that mana. Ooh. I'm feeling pretty good at this state. And now we can start, you know, if we want to, we can start sacrificing Chandra Elementals to the oven as well. There we go. Actually, I, I, I should wait on this one. I was about to go back and cancel that because if an opponent has a haste creature, I can block and then sacrifice the cat to not take damage. Oh, that was a nice level up. Okay. Um, what do we have here anyways? Blue or black, green or blue, blue or green. Okay, so hopefully I can finish one of those. Black one should be easy enough because this is a mostly black deck. And we have a mono black with a splash of green for uh, Once Upon a Time. Coming up in a little bit, that's an Ayara focused deck. Which that one... On last week's stream, that was that was the breakout deck of these three. Like this, the Aristocrats deck, like you just thought do its Aristocrats thing, and we all kind of knew that thing, and now it has a new angle. But the Ayara deck is like kind of it's entirely it's entirely its own thing, and it's very fun. Castle Lock Twain looking really bad in both of these opening hands. There's only two in the deck, so the way that we've been drawing them is not representative. Looks like we've got Golos. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So probably Golos, given they're leading on Tranquil Cove, but could be like blue-white flyers or something with a little bit of a budget mana base or or whatever. Hopefully don't go swamp and then legions on our familiar. I got hit with a turn one Cauldron's Familiar. Ooh, that's not what you want to see, that is it? <clears throat> Cauldron's Familiar into um, opponent goes turn two legions end <laughs> and makes us very sad. Okay, so we're just going to attack here. And then I think... So I imagine they have, like, Dovin's Veto, Negate, something like that. They could have, like, Double Spectral Sailor. I don't know what we're up against here. Um, but I think that whatever it is, I kind of like throwing this out. If it's main deck Mystical Dispute, that can't hit this because it'll cost them three mana. Essence Capture with no target. Okay. Um, so a blue-white question mark counterspells deck. Huh. Alright, so I'm going to shock this in so that I have three mana. 
Then I'm going to cast Cauldron Familiar. Then I'm going to do, at the end of their turn, or if they tap out, do it once upon a time. Because I would love to resolve that. We could do it here while they're at two mana, but I think it's better to wait, see if they spend their mana on anything else, because I really want to try to resolve this. That is a clever a clever thing you can do sometimes, if you know that your opponent has, like, um, if they have a Fabled Passage in play, and that represents them having enough mana to counter one of your things, you can wait until they crack it, and in response to the trigger, you can cast your spell while they don't have that land in play. Okay, in that case, I'm just going to say go. Or, I guess I'm not saying go, they're saying go, whatever. You know. Because they have to do something at some point to stabilize this board. And... Uh, I want this one. Tapped. So right now, Castle Lock Twain's looking a lot better. Uh, so if they... Okay, opt. What are we up against? I like what they find. How many cards do they have in hand? Six now. What the heck is this? I'm going to hold this Rankle for now. Because I imagine that our opponent's holding a lot of... Like, they're holding up their mana for something, and we're just nickel and diming them to death with these cats, so I'm not activating there because I don't want to take all that damage. I don't know what, like, I still don't know what they're on. Blue-white things? Question mark? I think at the end of this turn I'm probably just going to run it once upon a time because they've gone so long without doing anything. So end of their turn, if they have resources to counter once upon a time, then that makes them spend them. Here we go. It's like a planner cleansing? Gadwick? Gadwick, huh. Oh. Still don't know what we're up against, because <laughs> I've never seen Gadwick before. Interestingly, Gadwick made them pass a new ruling in terms of how cards work, because it used to be that triggered abilities couldn't query uh, the things that, that triggered upon enter the battlefield could not query an X... Ooh, boy, that's a punish. Couldn't query an X value that was in the casting cost of the card, because by the time it was in play, X would equal zero. So they actually had to make a new rule that said... Um, how do I want to do this? I think I'm going to lead with Mayhem Devil. I think they have to respond. So anyway, they had to make a new rule that said triggered abilities from coming to play need to be able to target um, target the, or to query whatever X was when it was cast, even though by the time it's going off, X equals zero. If I had one more mana here, I could actually run out, claim the first four, and try to get them to counter it. and then Rankle. I think I'm going to do this anyways. This takes them to two, so they. I feel like this is something they kind of have to respond to. And then if they do, we can Act of Treason and take them to two anyways. Because there's no Spell Pierce, so they can't go like... I mean, we could pay through two Spell Pierces, or pay through one Spell Pierce, make them cast another... No, it'd be out of mana at that point. So they could have double spare spell pierce so that we're in the format, which it is not. Oh, let's write our guy doesn't have haste. Okay, so they go to five. We could have given our guy haste, actually, if we'd wanted to with either one of these, but... Really, I just wanted them to counter something. Okay, prison realm... One, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we do have enough for Active Treason plus Rankle here. So I'm going to go for that, because if Active Treason resolves, they are dead. I suppose they could cast a blue spell and then tap one of our guys. But if that's all they have, then we put down Rankle anyways. 
and then sacrifice their Gadwick to Rankle. Okay, there we go. Oh no, our guy is tapped. Ooh, that's a new effect, isn't it? I don't think I've seen that before. Okay, um, I don't think I want to make them discard. But I like making them draw because that means they're dead next turn to just Rankle. And I like sacking this guy to make them kill their Gadwick, obviously. That seems pretty good. This is Insight. And Scoops. Boy, I have no idea what you're up against there. Like, obviously it was a blue-white tempo build? Like, tempo counter spells, I guess? Um, I don't know if you really run Gadwick in, like, a control shell. That seems a little bit sketchy to me. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure what that was. Someone experimenting, which I... I love experimenting. You've probably noticed that, so... Good on you, opponent. I hope it goes well for you. Uh, yeah, it seemed like they're like they had so many cards in hand and so much mana open. I just <laughs> I have no idea what they could have been holding. Um, I seem to have really bad luck with play versus draw when I stream, don't I? Well, we are probably dead. It's great to have a format where you can know that turn one, right? Your opponent goes turn one goose, and you can say, well, okay, probably just, you know. I guess they mulliganed there, didn't they? They went to six, so put this in a slightly better spot. This could still be Oko. Yup. Ooh, Alcar Cauldron Familiar, Oko. Ah, blast. Never Oak your opponent's Cauldron Familiar. <laughs> it just makes it a 3 3, then it can still come back into play after it dies. Um, so yeah, we're probably out of this game, because opponent had a turn... The opponent had an Oka when we had taken one turn so far. Um, I'm trying to think what our lines into this game are. It's probably play Priest of Forgotten Gods. Hope that they decide not to swap. Or Alcar Priest. Oh, they just make a food. Okay, that's alright. Because now we can... Do this. They could have, like, flash or instant stuff here, but um, we will want to attack first regardless, so. Oh, that's pretty good for them. Alright, so that guy just dies either way. Oh, it goes to five again. This goose will inoculate them from having to sacrifice their ambusher, which is way too bad for us. Well, it does give us the mana to um, play a couple more cats to protect our Chandra. If we can get a claim the firstborn here. Okay, good. They just. I, I think it would have been better to swap her, actually, because that's going to be really hard for us to deal with. I, I, I mean, maybe they don't have enough creatures in their deck for that to be worthwhile. Maybe they'd rather keep the Oko out, but uh, since they have a stream of tokens coming in here, um, it seems like that'd be really good for them. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure that we are dead here to the. Uh, we have a swamp and they have, or we have we have a cat and they have an oko. Um, but we'll give it another turn or two and see what happens. Um, we have black, black, red, red. Yeah, we'll just get another. We get another red here because we want to let Chandra and then flash something back off of her. That takes three red most of the time. Alright, I imagine our next priest is turning into an elk. Are you guys looking forward to however many months of dealing with this? Like, I'll admit that like Field of the Deck it was a problematic Field of the Deck was a problematic card and everything, but um I don't think it was actually the primary problem of this format. I think that the primary problem lies elsewhere. Um, yeah, I think we're just gonna... Just gonna be dead. And the thing, too, is that, like, sometimes we can grind out games with Witch's Oven, but guess what happens to Witch's Oven when your opponent has an Oko? Spoiler alert, it's not very pretty. Um, <laughs> I mean, they are turning your 1-drop into a 3-3, three, three, so there's that at least. But, um, as you can see... That wasn't going to do very much for us anyways. And our Murderous Rider is our sideboard, as are our Noxious Grasps. So we didn't have a way of blowing up any of those through that. I guess, I mean, I guess the one thing it could have had was get a get a Rankle. But our Chandra was about to die, so we wouldn't have had a free source of things to sack anyways. We get to go first this oh, Man, this Castle Lock Twains are really biting us here. So maybe it's right just to cut these. Uh, we've very seldom been in a position so far. Uh, I don't think I've ever activated Castle Lock Twain in these decks. I'd rather go next turn play Oven plus Cat than play the Oven this turn and then not anything next turn. Because the Oven obviously, the oven, oven obviously doesn't do anything on its own. But if we can find another, uh, another Red Source, we'll be in great shape here. If they Oko and uh, turn our oven into an elk, like we can, we can hit them for four if they do that. Take their Oko to one, but that's uh, still not great. If this were an Oko, I imagine it would have come down already, so we're probably dodging that bullet for now. We'll take it. I'm just going to put the stop in here so I don't forget to do my... Do my cat combo. Alright, any untapped land. Any untapped land one time. Yes! Right would have been preferable, of course, but this is also... Pretty good. Do I just steal their goose and cook it? That does take them off mana. And it's very poetic. I think I'm actually supposed to play Mayhem Devil here. Um, well, it starts to represent they can play Nissa next turn. That's very bad for us. So I think I kind of like that, actually. Well... No, I'm going to do this. We don't have any way of dealing with larger creatures if we do that.
we could swing in there for a damage. Um, but I'd rather have... So we could get in for one, potentially. But this turns them off of Killer Mayhem Devil and then getting in for two with Paradise Druid if they don't want to ramp with it this turn. Oh, that's pretty good. Let's see what they target. Probably the Mayhem Devil, because they can... Yep. Let's make him eat the food first. <laughs> I wonder if they're doing the thing that I keep doing where... Um, uh, so which one do I kill here? Probably the... Do I kill the goose or the paradise druid? Oh, I, can, I can kill the wicked wolf, can't I? Um... Because I sacrificed that. Oh no, I can't. I can only deal two. I think we have to kill this because it's going to give them that source of food. And now we can... Go ahead, Act of Treason, their Wicked Wolf. Ooh, another Mayhem Devil is amazing. Still need the other red for Chandra. Alright, so Act of Treason, you. Sack you. Get two food because it was a 4 4. Because it had already been fed, so it gave us twice as much food. That's that's the you know flavor text of this card is that if the sacrifice creature's toughness is 4 or greater, you get two food tokens. Oh no! Well, there goes our. That's definitely a worthwhile trade, I think, but it does not feel good. Oh wait, we already have two food in play. Okay. I'll make that trade. Hmm. No, that doesn't make any sense. There's no reason for us to put this into play here, though, because we're not going to attack with it until the Wicked Wolf. Okay, well, there's another source of red. Actually... It also gives us Rankle. It's Rankle. Put Color and Familiar back into play. This will turn off our cat combo. But it lets us kill their Wicked Wolf by Edicting. I think I like doing these two. We're way ahead in this race. We have really good cards in hand. And we just want to... Close up the game ASAP. Plus this puts them to three. Yeah, that sounds good. Next turn we can get either one of these guys out. If they have another Wicked Bull for a Wrinkle, we can eat it. And then the Cauldron Familiar take them to five. Reach. That is a problem. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. It also has trample. That is equally a problem. So we're gonna Chandra. Some elementals. Don't worry. I brought company. Now 
Okay. So we're going to want Wrinkle to block for Chandra so that we can act of treason next turn off of her minus, and then... Uh, and then sacrifice the Stone Coil Serpent. I don't think... Actually, I think I do do this, don't I? I think this is good, because that keeps her at three, then. Both of them in front of there. We absorb four damage, she takes one, she stays at three, so then we can minus her and still have her on the battlefield. I'm telling the abbots. Ooh, that's one I don't see often. All right, so we steal Yorvo, attack. They have to chump block. I guess we could put him to one if we. Oh no, they would just trade out this guy for that guy. Um. Too bad we can't also get counters on this guy before we sacrifice him so that they, uh... Well, I guess he doesn't have Trample, though. Yeah, so it won't do anything. Yep. Cook that guy. So I assume they spend their attack step getting Chandra down to zero. And if we get a land, we're in a fantastic spot. So we can just kill them. I'm burnt out. Stonecoil putting up a really good showing here. Oh, there's that guy again. That's their last card. Crawl Harpooner. Yeah, they just die, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Sack of food. And this is pretty much how we draw it up, is the... Like, it, it's strange, because this is, this is an aggro deck without any... Like, it's a red aggro deck that doesn't run any burn spells. But it has an incredible amount of reach, because, <laughs> because of this combo, and the Mayhem Devils, and the Chandras, and all that stuff. So, um, that's going to be the last one for that deck before we move on to the Ayara deck. But... That, I mean, that felt pretty good. I thought that was a really good showing for that deck. It's really fun to play. Um, what's it like in terms of wild cards? Yeah, it's pretty wild card heavy. I mean, decks are becoming so wild card heavy now because like they're, they're just shifting so much power into the rare and mythic slots uh, more than I think has been traditional. <clears throat> but we've got, you know, some uncommons. Like, we've got 12 uncommons there, two commons there. Everything else is a exactly, I guess, Rankle is mythic. Sideboard. Sideboard is um, Murderous Riders, the only one. So it's a little, it's it's on the pricey side for sure. But if you have the wild cards, this is this is a really fun aggro deck. I really enjoy it, and I don't know how it's going to do against like the Esper decks and things like that. But um, that I imagine are going to start cropping up now that Field is going to be gone in two days. But against other things, uh, the fact that you can just burn people out by looping cats <laughs> is really cool. Obviously, Elko makes you really sad, but I mean, that's just going to happen 
for the next two years probably so kind of just have to accept that um oh in terms of card choice so we pretty much never got to cast a once upon a time there like we cast one and it hit a land where we wanted a creature so that was like we pretty much never got to see this come up um which is weird because we should have like a 45 percent chance to have one in our opening hand i think statistically but um i wish we could have seen it we'll hopefully see it in the next deck so just take my word for it this has been performing really well active treason actually did really pull some weight there even flashing it back in that last game off of chandra Rankle, likewise, did a really great job here. I pulled him out of the next deck we're going to play because I just didn't feel like he was that good for it, but he, like, he put in some serious work on this deck. Um, sideboard's pretty rough, of course, but I feel like the extra active treasons are actually pretty good. Uh, Murderous Rider, of course, to be able to deal with larger creatures when we have to. Really nice to be able to kill a Wicked Wolf when they like have a food that comes into play. They eat their food in response. You can Murderous Rider their wolf to kill it before it gets the um, indestructible and then it can't fight a creature because it's dead so that's great um, so anyway this is the so this is cookie cat it's a pet for your tummy um, and it is the mono black with once upon a time because why not uh, this does have three temple of malady um, this should probably actually be four temple of malady zero fabled passage but I only have three right now and I have I think two rare wild cards so let's not strain that too much I spent three getting Ayara and recently spent three getting my midnight reapers so I'm a little little strapped for the wild cards right now but so this deck is very similar to the last one um but just black we got rid of the red cards the biggest loss from this I feel like is mayhem devil because that card <laughs> is insane in in aristocrats decks um, but we do have some more synergies in here. So we have one, we have some hard removal, which is great. We have Midnight Reaper, which gives this deck an insane grindy element because that turns the that turns this combo into deal your opponent one draw card every time you use Witch's Oven. Um, Ayara is basically a force multiplier on your Cauldron Familiars because she causes all of your creatures to have this ability when they enter the battlefield. So this does it twice. Lazatep Reaver swings you for four when it comes into play, because both of the creatures give you one, and then you can sacrifice even token creatures with this. So you can get rid of the zombie off of Reaver or Dreadhorde Invasion. And these two together are great, because this makes a token, which gains you a life, drains them for one. You lose one, but then you sacrifice it and draw a card. So effectively, again, it's just like every turn, draw a card, drain your opponent, or deal one to your opponent effectively and then this one's kind of a sleeper card i feel like in these lists but order of midnight i tried out last time and i loved it we'll see how it does today um but it's because this deck like you saw before how we're kind of like this synergy clockwork machine where we have to have all of the gears in place for them to really work well um we um we one want to be able to find it with once upon a time which, again, we can't find Witch's Oven, but pretty much the rest of the engine we can find. And then, as we've seen, these cards like Priest of Forgotten Gods, Midnight Reaper, Ayara, they just draw removal like nothing else. So having Order of Midnight to be able to rebuy the critical piece at the right time, and then come into play and trigger Ayara and give you another body to sacrifice to Ayara, or just beat in to your opponent for a while, is great. So uh, I was really impressed with that. I think that I saw someone recommend actually find finality, which I only have one of, and I think it's definitely worth a consideration in the sideboard at least. I think that it's probably better to have Order of Midnight here because it's less conditional um, than find finality because it is also part of your engine, not just rebuying you parts of your engine. Um, but you know, it's definitely worth considering, and the board wipe part. This is why I think it might be good in the sideboard because it's kind of similar to what this is doing main deck, but having this as a I can get back two things or you know kill all your stuff uh, I mean granted we probably don't want to be wiping our board because we have a lot of <laughs> we have a lot like all of our creatures die to that so that's not great but you know sometimes you just need a board wipe even if it's six mana so anyways all that said let's give it a try I did not post a good record with this last time because it's a deck that has lots of strange interactions in it and things that I'm just not used to playing so um, 
So yeah, we'll see how it goes this time. Like, <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm, part of me is glad that the last video didn't go up, the last stream didn't go up, because there were so many times where I would, like, make a plan and go, oh my god, this was so wrong, this is really embarrassing. Um, so, not having that. This is the first time we've been on the play, I think. That's nice. Ooh, opponent mulligans twice. And screw. Okay, well, there, there was our one time on the play. <laughs> Being on the play is really overpowered, chat. You just win immediately. Um... While we're on the topic of winning immediately being on the play, I'm just going to quick look at my MTG Arena tools here. Um, yeah, uh, this season I have a 60%, well, 59% win rate on the play and a 38% win rate on the draw. <laughs> so that's a 50% spread, <laughs> roughly 40 to roughly 60. So like that... That that tells you something about how how well balanced that part of this game is, especially if you're doing best of one. Like that that makes best of one so swingy, even with the shuffler algorithm where they try to give you a better hand. Um, but and we, and we had the once upon a time in hand, and we were on the play, and oh, everything was just coming together for us there. And our opponent had to go and just make us win immediately instead of you know getting to see things come together. Maybe. Well, okay. Um, this looks a lot like that last one. Let's make sure we once upon a time before we get our bones, huh? Once upon a time there was an Order of Midnight, I think we're going with. Or, uh, sorry, not Order of Midnight. Um, Cauldron Familiar. Like, all of these would be really good, honestly. But I think we want to start... Give him a hello. I think we're actually going to be on the gutter bones, so we can hopefully beat in for two next turn, and then go called in familiar, which is oven. Not so much for beating in for two there, but I mean, this is a pretty good position to be in. I'm not going to complain too much. Okay, opponent has had enough of that. <laughs> I wish I could say that um, my previous games were that easy, were this easy with this deck, but that was not the... Ooh, Mastery Orb. Uh, yeah, we, we had a rough time last time with misplays all over the place. Alright, we've got to have a couple games that go longer than that, because we need seven more black or green spells. Or we will start losing out on daily quests. Although, oh, I saw that, wasn't there something about how your first couple wins, have, have they actually done it yet, or are they just going to do it in the future, where your first couple wins every day give you, like, 25 experience kind of as a catch-up mechanism? I think that's really cool, because it was terrible when basically all of your experience was coming from, like, win this many every day instead of being tied to your, like, win five games every day instead of being tied to your quests, which don't even require wins. Um, so... I didn't like that at all, but I think that just having it like, oh, there's a l cat cosplay. <laughs> Are we in the mirror match? Is this the mirror match chat? Here we go first again. Wow, all of our... All of the luck all of a sudden. Unfortunately, we can't find the other half of our combo with Once Upon a Time. And the two, of course, is clunky, but we have a forest here, so we can cast the other one at some point. Um... See, apparently you just have to complain, and then the algorithms give you all of... Maybe you have to be streaming, actually. Be streaming and complain, and then you start being on the play. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I just thought that that was a great decision on their part to... Ooh, this is greedy, but very good. But we only have one source of black if we take Priest of Forgotten Gods. Let's do it. We have, pre we have Order of Midnight to buy it back if it dies. So... That's awesome. And we can cast our Once Upon a Time on a future turn. But anyway, I think it was great that they just added that little bit of... Ooh, boy. Prepare for a beating. Us, not, not opponent. Opponent does not need to prepare for the beating. Although, if we can stick Priest... We're not looking too shabby. I don't think I'm going in here because we're not racing them, and... Well, I guess we're probably not going to block with this guy anyways. Yeah, it's probably wrong not to attack there. We'll see if we lose by one. Ooh. Tapped land for our opponent is amazing for... Okay, so now we're punished for the for the greed earlier, but... I'm okay with that. 
go gutter bones. Activate. Target you. Oh no, we're not punished. Because we're gonna get two mana off this. Sweet. Okay, that felt pretty good. Might have actually been right to rebuy Cotton Familiar and play it there. But, uh, ooh, and there's the. Okay, this is. This is going to be difficult for our opponent now, I think. So we will go. Land. Oven. Alter Fate, make sure we're keeping up a black. Because Auto Tapper feels like it's actually worse now than it's been before, which is saying a lot. Play Cauldron Familiar. Get two triggers. Do I actually like attacking with Ayara here? Or do I like holding up for potential card draw? I think I like holding up for potential card draw. And I like having Cauldron Familiar back here so that I have this as a blocker, and then can sacrifice it to this and keep our... Ooh. Okay, so do I actually want to sacrifice these guys to turn off the acclaimed contender? No, that seems bad. Because if, if we get rid of their knight, then this doesn't search. But I think we get more value out of this. If they find an Ember Cleave or something, then we're, just, <laughs> we're in bad shape. But... Okay, so they get in for one. Um, they can't do anything tricky here, so we're just gonna... Because they're tapped out and they played a land for turn already. And block there. And then we will... Do this. Get our food. Um, I think I like putting this into play... No, I'm not gonna attack with it. And I don't think there's a reason I'll we're going to attack put it into play right now, so... Ooh, okay, well that's good, because then we can lock the board down pretty good. I tried this deck without Murderous Rider for a little bit, just to try to go a little more linear. It was not a good idea, don't do that. Again, I don't think we're attacking here. I don't think there's a reason to put anything into play right now. Ooh. That is good for them. Although attacking with that's going to be a liability once. Once we have Murderous Rider in play. Because we'll be life blinking for two every time they do it. gonna once here. Actually, no. I think we're gonna shock this in. Play a rider. Play an order of midnight. We'll see what they do before we make any moves. I 
Magic Legion's end. Huh. Okay, so this is effectively gaining us... Or they're de dealing one damage to us here. They could have Embercleave and then we're... Like, you know... Embercleave... Always respect the Embercleave. That was, that was really, I think, along with Oko. Like, next to Oko, that was probably the breakout card of... The... Do I actually want to... I think I like just continuing to loop this. No reason to do this here. Of the uh, Mythic Championship 5, I feel like. So I'm going to run this out here. Actually, first I'm going to make sure... That if nothing's scribed to the bottom. So I'm going to crack this right now. We have no sacrifice synergy in this deck, like the... Um, Um. Oh, yuck. Boy, that was a swing and a miss. Like the um, Mayhem Devils, but... We do still have... Um, we we want to get that out of there. So we want to get that out because... That lets us. Um, there's fewer fewer lands in our deck then, so we have a slightly lower chance of hitting a land, which clearly didn't help us because we hit a bunch of lands and like an enchantment and an artifact. So opponent's pretty close to dead here. Wait, are they just dead? One, two. They're just dead here actually, because we go attack with Order of Midnight. Take them to four. Sacrifice Cauldron Familiar. Turn it to play. Drain them for two. Priest of Forgotten Gods. Sack. Oops. Probably these two. There we go. Got there. <laughs> On an actual game this time where we didn't... <laughs> our opponent didn't scoop after mauling to five on the draw. Okay, good. We finished our quest, too. Awesome. Uh, I think I got one more in me for tonight. Uh, Chris and I are actually doing a... Uh, doing a conference call after this for our... Um... I guess it's the side gig to this channel, but actually our main gig. This is a side gig, too, uh, for our board game development stuff. We've got some really big news about some potentially cool uh, just like cool opportunities for us in the near future. So that could be really exciting. Nothing is finalized, so can't I have, I have to be as vague as possible about that. But I have some cool things uh, where we'd get to work with some cool people and help them work on some games help uh, have them work on ours. This will be a good place to cut it too, I think, after this one, because um, we'll be coming up on the point where we probably want to restart the client. Again, apologies for the shorter stream. Um, I spent a while trying to make sure that we were actually broadcasting. Wow, uh, I think we were on the play every time with this deck. So I think we were 0 for X with Aristocrats, and X for 0 with this one. Or X for X, rather. And I think we got Once Upon a Time in our opening hand each time. Okay, so the utterly greedy thing would be to take Ayara, and I think I like doing that because we've got so much that we can do off of just two lands. And our third land off of our hand right now only gets us Midnight Reaper, which doesn't do a whole lot with what we have currently. And Ayara is just so strong that I think we have to take her. 
I'm going to lead on the gutter bones, not the familiar, because we don't have any value thing for our familiar. This represents more power. It's more chumpable. It's, it's more throwawayable, uh, because we can buy it back um, without having to have a card that we don't have in our hand yet. And then... I think I actually like attacking here, as weird as that sounds. Now, if they have a robber of the rich, we want this guy back on defense. Um... And then that lets us play around, like, you know, if we would have... If they would have been representing, like, a potential Legion's End, and we would top deck a Oven, then we're able to play around that potential Legion's End uh, if we have a Gutter Bones and Plank and hold the Cauldron Familiar, which we ended up having two of, so that would have been really bad. That one, <laughs> that one game where I went, turn one, I, you know, turn one, cast Cauldron Familiar, go, and opponent Legion's End, <laughs> it's just, I'm never going to recover from that. Okay, Plunk does Runaway Steamkin. Does not offer the tr Ooh. Well, that's a good card. Unfortunately, their Runaway Steamkin could just level us here while we're missing on lands. Or they could concede. Okay. I'm surprised they conceded given that we missed a land drop there and then... I mean, like, we have no idea what's in their hand, right? They could have had all lands, or nothing, like, they were on their last land and couldn't play anything. Although, that would be unusual for... Yeah, I guess they were just looking at the fact... I mean, so... Cool, we're under Ravens. Nice. Um, the... Okay, so we're gonna jump in here and look at how that happened. I'm sorry we didn't get better games off of that, but, you know, <laughs> we'll be playing this deck in the future, believe me. And uh, we will have plenty of opportunities to... Um, Snack on Cookie Cat there. But, um, yeah, so let's let's have a look here. I don't think we ever saw Lazotep Reaver, which is one of our Priest of Forgotten Gods synergies. So, so we don't have Chandra, right? That's like the big loss for Priest of Forgotten Gods, but we kind of piecemeal together some Chandra-like elements because we have Lazotep Reaver, which has the advantage of being a lot easier to cast. So you can like have two mana, go Priest into Reaver, as opposed to, you know, having to have black and something, and then have something red-red the next turn for Chandra. So we have that, which we can just use to activate immediately. Um, we have Dreadhorde Invasion, giving us a supply of 1-1s. One we have... Uh, and then we have Gutter Bones, which also helps with that, because I think the reason our opponent conceded there is because we had two Cauldron Familiars and the Gutter Bones. And when we sack Gutter Bones, we get two life, and our opponent... Or we get two black mana, and our opponent loses two life. So that actually lets us replay or rebuy the gutter bones for free effectively and then we have mana left to play it back into play so we can start looping that and eating through their side so yeah now that i think about that that's why they conceded uh although man i'm surprised they didn't have a way of killing priest of forgotten gods like <laughs> she dies to <laughs> she dies to like every card in that deck I, i'm amazed they didn't have something to deal with her um but we saw once upon a time work out really well there even once um I think the, the time that we had double Once Upon a Time in our opener, that was when our opponent scooped uh, immediately. But we did see a game where we ended up having one in our hand for a while, and I mean, granted, we didn't find anything good off of it, but we top decked well after casting it, so we dug through a bunch of lands, and then two, like, there were two good cards in there, sure. So we went through those, um, but we also dug through three bad cards, and then started drawing good cards afterwards. Um... So that, that feels that feels totally like we didn't see it get cast late very often there, but we saw it be quite good when cast early. And we didn't like we got punished for the Ayara keep there, but we got really rewarded for the previous Ayara keep when we got to, you know, we're still on two lands, but we get to grab Ayara and then priest and then cast Ayara off of priest. And that is actually a big benefit, a big advantage of this deck over the the red the red aristocrats decks, is that Virtually anything in this deck you can cast off of Priest of Forgotten Gods mana. Whereas a lot of times you end up like you had to spend a red mana to get Chandra in. You had to spend your red mana to get Chandra into play. So then when you activate Priest of Forgotten Gods and sacrifice her tokens, you can no longer cast that Mayhem Devil in your hand because you just got two black and you need red. So that's actually a, a stealth advantage of this deck compared to those ones is just that. Priest is always giving you something 
that you can do with that mana, pretty much. We never got to see Midnight Reaper come online there, but you can imagine in those grindy games, if we were drawing a card or two every turn on top of everything else, that's that's the life right there. Like, we, we ground out a Grixis Fires deck twice in the last stream by having a Midnight Reaper and then the Cauldron Familiar Witch's Oven combo, and then, like, getting a Yara, too, so we're able to sacrifice other things to draw extra cards and all that. And even just, like... If you have these two cards out and like they target your Midnight Reaper for removal and then you can sacrifice your Midnight Reaper to draw two cards in response, even that is often enough, like three for wanting your opponent like that, is often enough to just like put you in such a commanding lead in this deck. And especially because card draw is so good in this deck because all of our cards get exponentially better the more of our other cards we have in play because they all combo together so well. Speaking of which, we also got to see Order of Midnight put in some work there. Like, that literally won us the game, not only by buying back the right creature at the right time, but by being able to just hit our opponent for two. I mean, granted, they were probably going to lose that game, but we were a we were an Embercleave away from being in a potentially rough spot. Um so I mean we had we had enough board presence that we could have survived the hit, sure. Um, and then probably won the next turn, but just just that guarantee of, oh wait, our opponent's dead because this creature has flying is great. And again, the not being able to block is a big problem with this card, I realize that, but um doesn't matter if we can block, if we can just gain a ton of life every turn, our opponent can never kill us. Sideboard, um, I don't know if these drill bits are right, but because we're so easily able to activate Spectacle off of putting a cat back into play, I think it's pretty good. Like we also, this is also an evasive threat. Priest of Forgotten Gods also not only deals damage to our opponent, but then gives us mana to cast Drill Bit. So it seems like as discard goes, this is a pretty good choice for this deck. Also, Ayara casting anything, um, well, any black creature entering the battlefield um, lets us Drill Bit for one. So that's great. Uh, a couple Elder spells <laughs> because there's a lot of really good Planeswalkers out there right now, and we need to kill them. Noxious Grasp, this is a questing beast Oko format, in my opinion, and you want to be able to kill them for cheap. Um, and then just, you know, the last the last uh, Murderous Rider, um, Legion's End Vela Summer, protect our guys, protect our board, protect our life total. One thing that I do want to talk about for a second here on the subject of questing beast and Oko is this guy. Blacklands Paragon. So this is not in this deck, and I don't think it belongs in this deck, because it doesn't really synergize very well. Like, everything in this deck synergizes with the other cards in the deck with the exception of Murderous Rider, which is just so good that you kind of need it, I think. Like, when I didn't have it, when I had Rankle instead, like, two Rankle instead of um, instead of the Murderous Riders and I think a Lazotep Reaver, I had, like, the third Lazotep Reaver. And that just wasn't working out because our opponents would play a Questing Beast and we would go, wow, all of my removal is Edict Effects and my opponent's going to sacrifice their Paradise Druid well before they sacrifice their Questing Beast. So we just had to put Murderous Rider in. But other than that, everything in this deck synergizes with everything else, whereas Black Lance Paragon does not really at all. But I do want to talk about this card for a second because I've been running this in some aggressive, really low-to-the-ground Grixis lists that are sort of like knight adjacent. It's more like aggressive creatures and Regisar with Embercleave and Royal Scions. Um, but Blacklands Paragon, actually, let's bring up the list right now, why not? Um, has, I went back and forth on it, and I thought, okay, there's going to be more, there's going to be, like, more three, three mana Teferi now, so Flash creatures get worse, but also there's probably going to be more, like, Sorcery Speed removal, so then Flash gets better, and there's going to be Planeswalkers that you want to snipe, so Flash gets better. So I went up to three, from two to three in this deck here, and then I realized Blacklands Paragon is actually like the only thing that you can do to guaranteed kill a questing beast right now. And sure, it's not actually completely guaranteed, but if your opponent attacks him with questing beast, like we've all seen the play, right? Opponent goes turn four, like paradise druid. Turn five, play questing beast. Oh, look at that. Your paradise druid is up. I bet you have a veil of summer in your head. Okay, I'm dead because you had veil of summer. Blacklands Paragon can't be Veil of Summered. Blacklands Paragon has high enough power to block Questing Beast. Blacklands Paragon can give itself Death Touch and even gain you three life off of it. And then it can trade up two mana in that combat step. And because you're already in the combat step when you flash this in, the removal that they have in those decks is mostly like bounce your stuff with Teferi, put in a, 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 a Wicked Wolf and kill your guy, put in a... Um, Put in that Hydra thingy, uh, Voracious Hydra. It's all sorcery speed. I don't, I don't know if those decks even play 
anything that can instant speed deal with Black Lance Paragon. Out of the sideboard, they'll have things like Devout Decree if they're in white, Sorcery Speed. Aether Gust, instant, but can't hit black. Like, this is just like, if you want to kill a questing beast, this is your... I, I think this is a woman. I, it's, it's really hard to tell. I imagine it's a woman for some reason. Um, maybe it's because of the roses and that's really sexist of me, but this is this is your knight if you want to... Uh, if you want to kill questing beast. Um, so, I don't know if it's actually good enough to be, like, warranted as an inclusion in a deck that doesn't otherwise get as much out of this card. But if you're in, like, a knight's deck or an aggressive black base deck, or you have, you know, even, even like, one or two things we're giving the death touch to it, like, one or two death touch targets, like, like, Fervent Champion, that's first strike death touch out of nowhere. You know, it's really cool. Um, so, anyway, yeah, probably not going in that deck, but it was something that I've been thinking a lot about because of how important it is to be able to remove those green cards, and that's why, you know, you have, you have the the Noxious Grasps everywhere, including in decks where um, it sort of is at, at odds with everything else your deck is doing, but it's just that good. Uh, so anyway, uh, thank you for joining us. I think that next time we're going to open with this deck, because I've been doing a ton of, of tweaking this deck all, all season, uh, this whole format. And so this is basically give Rotting Registrar trample dot deck. <laughs> With triple Embercleave, quadruple Royal Signs, we have seven Trample Enablers for Scions. We also have Knight of the Ebon Legion, which is a great Trample target because of the Death Touch that it can get. Um, and then other you know cool things like the Fervent Champion, Black Lens Paragon that I just mentioned. First Strike, Death Touch out of nowhere, even gain a life out of it. I guess that's kind of cool. Black Lens Paragon, Stormfist Crusader is actually sweet because a lot of times, when you're an aggressive deck, your opponent is often priced into double blocking your Stormfist Crusader. And that means that this card's already drawn, like, it's drawn everyone a card, sure. It's gained, it's dealt damage to everyone, sure. But in a deck like this, that usually is in your advantage. And then your opponent double blocks, and then your Black Lance Paragon lets Stormfist Crusader trade with two of their creatures. And sure, maybe it's a Gilded Goose and, like, a Paradise Druid or something like that. But even that, like, you just killed two of their Monodarks out of nowhere, and they thought they were only losing one of them. Um, and then you gain two life off of it, and it's and then you have a three one in play afterwards because your your removal spell actually left a body behind. <laughs> that's that's like th this is this has been really fun. The times when I've been able to to you know get my opponent to block Stormfist, <laughs> it's it, it's amazing how well that works. The menace plus death touch on a two two, um, and then yeah, other than that, it's like you know. Um, Rotting Regisar is really good when it tramples and first strikes. Uh, you know, Rankle is a good card in medium aggressive decks. Uh, I actually dropped the curve of this deck a lot lately because I feel like you have to try to get under the the food decks to an extent and also the control decks that are probably going to be everywhere in the near future. Although we didn't see any today. We saw, we saw some Wicked Wolves and we saw an Oko, but we didn't see any control. Small sample size, field hasn't rotated yet, granted. Everyone's experimenting right now, so it's impossible to say what's going on. But assuming that we do end up running into those, I feel like you want a lower curve here. Um, and then kind of top out with, you know, this, which is often cheaper, and a couple wrinkles. This is totally, a totally jank sideboard right now, especially because so much of it is, like, counter spells when we have Rotting Registrar, which we don't want to have counter spells in our hand, and we're discarding cards all the time. You want to play everything out as fast as possible. But it has been super fun. We'll probably lead with it next time, which will be Saturday at the latest, or potentially earlier. But yeah, it's um oh, and then a similar deck where we're splashing white instead of blue. So um, this is Dino Might. K is silent. We just got. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of really cheap knights, and then one chance for glory, and some embercleaves again, and the rotting regicides. This is this is basically embercleave number four, honestly. But we don't want four embercleaves all the time because it's legendary. So having one and one is much better than two and zero. Um, and yeah, this is uh, so. This is kind of a response to the Mardu knights that we saw at Mythic Championship five last weekend, where they looked really impressive, but. I felt like the white in the deck was holding them back in a lot of ways. Because you, you get champion. Is that what it's called? Um, not perfect champion. Um, Venerable Knight. 
Yeah, you get Venerable Knight, which is cool, and you get Inspiring Veteran, which is really good for the deck. Um, but then there was Acclaimed Contender, which, as you start adding more and more white cards, you have to go more and more heavily into white, and we saw decks stumbling on mana a lot, and when you're an aggressive deck, you can't stumble on mana. You're just dead. Even with Training Grounds and Shocklands, people were stumbling all the time on mana, especially like trying to cast Regisar and having like double Tournament Grounds Mountain. And Acclaimed Contender, I just feel like it's so vulnerable in that if you don't have another knight in play, it's just bad. It's just super bad to play a 3-3 three, three, a three, three for 3. And if your opponent's playing a little spot removal or, like, heaven help you resolves a board wipe, this card that, that card is just terrible. So I felt like further warping the mana base to accommodate it was probably, like... You're you're gaining some sure, but you're also losing some, and I felt like maybe I would try a more a more consistent mono wise version of the deck. So that's been my other Embercleave Registrar project lately. Um, haven't actually tried it yet. I don't even have the lands for it. We have two Temple of Triumph that should be Sacred Foundries because I don't have any more wild cards. But that's another one I might try in the near future. Um, it looks it looks like it'll be really fun. So hopefully it turns out to be really fun. But anyway. That's going to wrap it for tonight. Sorry again for the short stream on account of stream technical difficulties, but hopefully we'll be bringing you longer ones in the near future. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. So much fun streaming for you guys. I just noticed that this is 30 green or blue and this is 20 blue or green, and that is going to bug me for a long time. Anyway, thank you very much for joining us. Um, let us know in the comments what you think, what you liked, what you think could be better, um, what you would like to see us cover, what other games. I've actually been getting a little bit of a hankering for some cyberpunk games. I've been playing the original Deus Ex, which I've never played somehow, even though cyberpunk is my favorite setting of all time by a huge margin, and I cut my hair differently because I like it so much. Like, like I, I wanted to look slightly more like I was out of Netrunner or something, so I shaved half of my head. It's a little long right now. It really needs to get trimmed. I'm going in next week. But um, So I've been playing the original Deus Ex and loving it, and I'm going to go on to um, Human Revolution after that. And then, of course, you have Cyberpunk 2077 coming up in the near future, and CD Projekt Red is awesome, and that game looks awesome, and I'm super psyched. So maybe I'll start like doing some Cyberpunk streams here and there. Let me know if you think that would be cool, if you would like to see that, what sort of games you'd like to see me play. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, love hearing your feedback. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. This has been Ben with the Tiger's Den. As always... Thank you. You guys are great. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.